So we multiply by 20x to the, well, I use x. I don't know why I use x. I should use t. I'm going to show you guys how to use the reduction of orders to solve this. We are first given that t squared is a solution to this differential equation, and it should just take a minute or so to verify to yourself. Just derive this twice. Plug in, and you will see 0 is equal to 0. So it is, in fact, a solution, OK? And notice that we have a second order because of the second derivative here. And this is linear because y double prime and y prime and y, they are all to the first power, right? But in this case, the coefficients, they are not constants because you already see we have the t squared and the 3t here, right? So in our case here, we have a second order linear differential equation with variable coefficients. Therefore, we cannot just do the things I told you guys in the previous video. Namely, I cannot just tell you guys that, hey, this is the first building block for the solution, t squared. For the second block, can I just do t times the first one, t squared, and say that's t cubed? No, cannot do that. In this case, we really have to use the reduction of waters to figure out what the second building block for the solution would be. All right? So here we go. Let me just write down y2 right here. And the deal is that, first, we are not going to worry about the constant multiple yet. We are just trying to figure out the building block for the solution, all right? And for y2, since you are given t squared as the first solution right here, y2 will just be phi of t, a function in terms of t. We multiply this right here by the first one. So we multiply by t squared like that. This is the starting. So we put down phi of t times t squared, and then we begin from there, and then derive this equation twice, and things like that. All right, before we differentiate this equation, let me just put this down in a nicer form. Let me write down t squared first, and then let me just write down, instead of phi of t, just the phi right here, OK? But we want to remember, phi is a function of t. All right, so now let's go ahead and differentiate y2 prime, it's going to be, here we have to use the product rule, right? So let me just keep the first function, which is t squared, and multiply by the second, which is phi prime, and then we add it with the second function, we keep it, and we multiply by the derivative first, which is 2t, so let me put down 2 right here and t right here, like that. And the next derivative, y2 double prime, it's going to be, remember to do product rule here and product rule here. All right. For this one, we keep the t squared first, and we multiply by the derivative of the second. Derivative of the first derivative will just be the second derivative, right? So we have v double prime. And then we add the second function, which is just v prime, and then we multiply by the derivative of the first, which is 2t. So let me put down 2t, like that. And now I will differentiate this, and of course use the product rule. And I will look at 2v as the first function, t as the second function. And let me put down 2 phi first, right? We keep the first function, 2 phi. And we multiply by the derivative of the second, which is just 1. And then we add the second function, which is t. And we multiply by the derivative of the first. Derivative of 2 phi is just going to give us 2 phi prime, like that. And now we have all the ingredients, and we just have to plug in all this into this differential equation, and then we'll try to solve for phi from there. So let me just put this down. First, we have t squared. So let me write it down in the front. And I will have to plug in y double prime, which is this expression here. And I am just going to put this down in order. Phi double prime, that term goes first, OK? And I will put down the t squared phi double prime like this first. And I will look for the phi prime term, which is this and that. And both of them have phi prime t, so I can combine my terms. So be sure you do so before you put it down. So you see that 2, 2, so of course plus 4. And let me put down the t first, and then the phi prime, like that. And the last term that we have from the second derivative is just 2 phi times 1, which is just plus 2 phi. OK, and next we have plus 3t times y prime, which is just this. And let me put down t squared phi prime first, right here. And then we put down plus, 
And let me put down all the T's first before phi, all right? So we have two T phi, like that. At the end, we minus 8, and the Y is T squared times phi, right? So we have 8 minus 8 T squared phi, like that. And we still make this equal to 0. And now let me just tell you guys something to look forward to. Whenever we're doing this, right? The terms that was phi, the original phi, should cancel out. And you will see, right? I don't promise the other terms, but the term with phi should always cancel out. So now let's see, I'm just going to distribute this t squared into this parentheses. So we will have t to the fourth power phi double prime, and then we add it with 4 t to the third power phi prime, and then plus this times that, which is plus 2 t squared phi, all right? And then we do this times that, which is plus 3 t to the third power phi prime, and then we add it with 3 times 2 t, and so on, right? 3 t, and then it's t squared, and then the phi right here. At the end, we have the minus 8 t squared phi. Let's still make it to 0. Okay, let's see. Okay, we have the 2 t phi plus 6 t squared phi, right? 2 t squared phi, 6 t squared phi, that's 8 t squared phi but we minus 8t square feet. So, you see, this, this, that, cancel each other out. And you see, all the terms have feet. They all will, you know, always cancel out. And now, we see that this and that we can combine, and this is pretty much stays the same, right? So, in another word, we have t to the fourth power, phi double prime, and this and that together, let me just indicate that we are combining terms, is plus 7t cubed phi prime, and this is equal to 0. Okay, so from here, can we solve for phi? Well, we see that we have the first derivative only, and the second derivative right here, right? We don't have the original. So we can do some substitution, right? So in terms of you know, this right here, we just have the derivatives only. And what we can do is, of course, let's just divide everything by t to the fourth power. And in another word, we will look at this as phi double prime plus 7 over t phi prime is equal to 0. And from here, this is the first derivative. This is the derivative of the first derivative. We do some substitution. We let w equals to phi prime. In another word, w prime will be phi double prime, right? So we can look at this right here as w prime plus 7 over t, this is just the regular w, and then this is equal to 0. And I can just solve this by separating the variables, and I'll show you. Let's move this to the other side, and allow me to write down w prime as dw dt, all right? I'll move this to the right-hand side, so this is equal to negative 7 over t w, like this. And now, I will divide w on both sides, so I will get 1 over w here, and I will, will keep the dw on the left-hand side, and this is equal to negative 7 over t, and I will multiply dt on both sides, so we have this right here. And now we can separate, we separate the variables, and now we can just go ahead and integrate, integrate. And of course, if you want to just solve this by uh, the integrating factor, you can do the same as well, doesn't matter. Um, on the left-hand side, we get ln absolute value of w, and on the right-hand side, we get equal to, put down the constant, which is negative 7, and the integral of 1 over t, dt is ln absolute value of t, and here we put down a constant, right? And let me just put down plus k1 right here. Alright, I want to solve for w from here, so let me just do e to this power and e to that power, this and that will cancel. And you know the deal, the absolute value doesn't matter. Let me just write it down as w here. And then you also know the deal, right here, you are going to bring the negative 7 to the power here, right? So let me just write this down as e to the ln absolute value t to the negative 7 here. And you know we have to multiply by e to the k1, which is the same as another constant, so let me put down k2, like this. 
and you know the deal, this and that will cancel, and you know the deal, the absolute value doesn't matter. In another word, W is equal to K2 times T to the negative seventh. Right, what's W? W is the same as V prime, and I can just write this down, right? So we have V prime is equal to K2 T to the negative seven. If you want, you can write this down as dv dt, but it doesn't really matter that much, right? We can just go ahead and integrate, integrate, respect to, with respect to dt though. So on the left hand side, we see that we just have v by itself. And on the right hand side, what do we do with this? Well, this is a power, right? t to the negative 7. So I will add a 1 to it. Negative 7 plus 1 is negative 6. And then I will divide it by negative 6, which is 1 over negative 6, like that, right? Okay, k2 is a constant. Multiplying by 1 over negative 6 is another constant. So let me just put it down as k3. And this is t to the negative 6 power. And technically, right here, I still have to add another constant. So I'll put down k4. Okay, this is how <laughs> the v will look like. All right? And now we are pretty much done. I will come back to here for you guys. Because now I can say, y2, which is going to be v of t, and we found it. It's right here. It's right here, isn't it? So let me just write this down. It's going to be k3 t to the negative 6, and we add it with k4, right? We take this, and we multiply by t squared, right? Okay, of course, we can just multiply, multiply. So you see, this is going to give us k3, this times that, the power now, it will be to the negative 4. k3, t to the negative 4, and then we add it with k4, t squared. Okay, so this is how y2 will look like, based on all the computations that we just did. Okay, what's the new guy? This right here, it's given, isn't it? It's just a constant multiple of the original, so it's not new. The only thing that's new is this. This is the new building block for the solution. So altogether, you know, this is the first building block. This is now the second building block. And we just include the constant multiples, and that will be the answer. So I will just write down all the answers right here together. y is equal to the first building block, which is t squared. And the second building block is that, t to the negative 4. Constant multiples, so c1, c2, and then we add them together. That's it. This is the overall answer, the general solution for this differential equation. And just for fun, before we go, I will show you this is in fact the solution to that as well. And I'm not going to put on the constant multiple because if you have the constant multiple, uh, you still have that constant multiple anyway. So just a real quick check right here, right? This is just to check. So if y is equal to t to the negative 4, and then I will just differentiate this, we see y prime is going to be negative 4 t to the negative 5, and then one more time, y double prime is going to be positive 20 t to the negative 6. And now I will just have to plug in all this into the differential equation. And you will see, we will have first t squared times y double prime, right? So let me write it down. t squared times that, which is 20 t to the negative 6. And then we add it with 3t, and the y prime is that, which is multiplied by negative 4t to the negative 5. And then at the end, we minus 8. Why is that? t to the negative 4. Do we get 0? This is a question mark. Do we get 0? Well, here is 20. Together, the power is going to be negative 4. This and that is minus 12. And once again, the power is also negative 4. And this right here, is now minus 8, t to the negative 4. Does this give us 0? 20 minus 12 is 8. Minus 8 is 0. Right? They are like terms, and 0 is, of course, equal to 0. So it checks. That's it!